Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my video series on who had an item on a specific date in your Microsoft Access database. Okay, so yesterday we set up our little product table, so we got a list of products. We set up our rental table, so we know who rented what product on what dates, right? And then we set up on our form what date we're looking for, pick the product, and then we click the button and it'll tell us who it is. It won't just say hello world. So that's what we're going to do today is write the code that goes in this button. So the logic behind our code is going to be with the DLOOKUP, we're going to say, okay, here's the product ID and here's the date. Okay, I want to go into the rental table and I want to say find the rental ID where the start date is less than the date I'm looking up and the end date is greater than the date I'm looking up or equal to, greater than or equal to, of course, right? So if I'm looking for product three on January 7th, it should come back with that record. And of course, there are some options too. If, if it doesn't come back with a record, that means someone might not have had that product out, right? Or we might have a third case where it matches the start date, but there is no end date. So that product, you know, is still out. Okay, so we'll take a look at all these different situations. So let's go into our VB editor here. Right click, build event. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to make sure that they put data in those boxes. I don't want errors, right? So if is null, look update, then status, missing date, right? Colon exit sub. The colon means I can put another line there without having to do a whole if then statement, right? And we'll do the same thing for the product combo, product combo, missing product. Okay, so if they don't put anything in both of those boxes, it yells at them. And you can do more stuff, like you can, you know, move the focus to the product combo box and hit the drop down action and all, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Again, we're keeping it simple so we can focus on the logic. All right, so case one is going to be the product has a start date and an end date. Okay, so we'll take a look at that first. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look up a customer ID from that table. All right, we got our rental table. We'll just return, we'll just look up the customer ID and we'll use null zero NZ so that if it doesn't hit, if there is no record, if it doesn't hit something, it's going to return a zero. Yeah, I probably should have listed this in the prerequisites last week, but eh, I forgot. Okay, so if you never used the NZ function before, all it does is if a function returns a null value because like DLOOKUP can't find the record, it just gives you whatever you want, like a zero. All right, so we're gonna need a customer ID variable in here. So dim customer ID as a long, okay. And here we're gonna say customer ID equals NZ D lookup. Look up the customer ID from the rental table where the product ID equals whatever product is in the product combo box. And you want to put that outside the quotes, right? So that it actually, it actually gets the value of the product combo box and puts it inside your string. Okay. Next line. And some other stuff. Okay. So, and the start date is less than or equal to, now I want to put the lookup date here. But again, dates have to be inside of these things, all right? They have to be inside of hashtags or octothorps or pound signs, whatever you want to call them, right? And look up date, and that'll close the date, okay? And one more thing, the end date has to be greater than or equal to whatever the look up date is. All right, comma zero for our NZ, and there's your lookup. I know, it's pretty complicated. Let's break it down. So we're looking inside a rental T for this particular product, right? Product ID equals six, for example, okay? And the start date of the rental has to be less than or equal to the lookup date, and the end date of the rental has to be greater than or equal to the lookup date. So if I look up January 1st for this product, it should return what I'm looking for. Don't forget your spacing, that's very important, right? Because you got the product combo number is gonna go right here inside the string, okay? Start date, you got your dates, 
right? End date, you got your dates. And then if this DLOOKUP returns a null value, in other words, there is no customer, then the NZ function will convert that to a zero and we can use that. All right, so now the next thing is going to be if customer ID equals zero, then status no one has it. Okay, otherwise we have a customer, right? And we can say status customer, and then you put customer ID in here, has it or had it. Okay, and yeah, you could you could do another D look up in here and D look up the customer's name if you want to say Joe Smith had it. That's just a that's another easy D look up. You should know how to do that. Okay. All right, let's save it. Debug compile. Let's give it a test. Let's come back over here. All right, let me just slide this down so we can do some testing here. All right, we want to see our data while we're testing it. I'll move this over this way. Okay, let's say we're searching for, we don't have records for March yet. Let's say we're searching for January 7th and I'm searching for product three. Oh, what's product three? Product three is that com badge. So let's pick the com badge and hit look up rental. Customer one had it. That's correct, right? It looked up for that product between those two dates and it found customer one. That's me. Let's see who had the phaser rifle. No one had it. Phaser rifle is product one. No one's rented product one at all. Okay, let's try product two, which is the handheld phaser. And let's see who had it on January 7th. No one had it because, right, it wasn't rented until the 15th. Let's change our date to the 15th. And there we go. Customer six had it. See? Okay, so that's working so far. There's one more situation we have to take into consideration, though, and that's what if the product is still out. So let's change this to one. I'll oh, keep it 115. Let's do product four, which is the tricorder. And it still says no one had it even though we can see here that they took it out on the 10th. So we got to add that code to our VBA here. All right, so in here, if this DLOOKUP still comes back with a zero, case number two might be that uh, the product has a start date, but no end date, so it's still out. We got to change our DLOOKUP statement just slightly. In fact, I am going to just copy this and paste it here. And we'll tab it in, of course, right there. Okay, so now we're going to say, look up, same thing, customer ID from the rental table where the product ID equals the product combo and the start date is less than or equal to the lookup date. And right here, we got to change this. And we're going to say, and if is null, and if is null, the end date, just like that. Okay, what that's gonna say is look up and see if that particular customer had it on that date, they match the start date, but there is no end date, it's null. Okay, and here we'll say if customer ID equals zero, then now we can say no one had it, and that's technically, I guess, case three, right? Case three, no no one home, right? Let's make this capital case right there. Capital case, no one has it. Else, now we can say the customer had it. Has it still out, right? Okay. Yeah, there's three different cases we got to check for here. We got an if-then loop and all that stuff. Not a loop, a, a structure <laughs> statement. <laughs> all right, let's test it. Save it. Come back over here. Well, always throw in a debug compile when you make changes like that. All right, and don't forget your backups. All right, let's test for that tricorder now. Click. Ah, customer seven has it still out. Look at that. Perfect. Same. Let's go back and check. Just make sure we didn't break. Always double check the stuff you already checked when you make changes. Because you don't want to break your code with something that you previously did. But let's just go back and check product two, which was the handheld phaser. And that's still working. All right. Did you like that? 
You want to learn more? In the extended cut for the members, we're going to take that code that we just wrote and rewrite it as a function, right? As a function. And as it, and with it as a function, we can then use it in different places in the database, including in a query. We can put it inside of a query and say, here's a list of all of my products and which customer had that product out on a specific date, right? We'll send the date and the product into the, into the function. It'll return the customer just like we just did. That'll be covered in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members get access to my code vault with lots of cool stuff in it. And you can download these databases that I build in the tech help videos and lots more. And of course, if you enjoy learning with me, come to my website and check out my developer lessons. I got lessons from all levels. I got from the very beginner all the way up through advanced stuff. And when, by the time you're done, you'll know just as much as me because I, I baked myself in, like into the lessons. I took pieces of myself and they're just, they're baked in there with a lot of love. So <laughs> come and check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, folks. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. 
Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.